acknowledge a mental base that I am a woman made in God. Not made in circumstances. You have to understand that. Once you accept your own dignity, the whole world will come to you. But you have to do first thing as first. If you do not accept your own dignity as a woman, all decorations and all facilities shall mean nothing. It has do nothing at all with any man or with any relationship, not at all. I'm not talking of the partnership. I'm talking of you as a ship. A woman who's a woman and a woman is a woman and a woman within and a woman without is in balance of being a woman. There is nothing in the realms of God which can give her anything or any trouble whatsoever. It's a law of nature. No man is born to cross it. No God can cross it. It's the rule of one God. Which cannot be forsaken. There are million stories in the scriptures and one of the stories Satyavan and Savitri is the greatest story which happened within the realms of the man. Savitri, the princess, the only daughter of the king, went horse riding into the deep jungle. She got separated by the bodyguards. She was brave, courageous, conscious and committed. Her word was a law. She was respected for that. Her self was pure and she understood herself. She got tired, she got out of the house, she took a shelter, she was extremely hungry. And she heard a noise. Somebody was cutting the tree. With her feeble voice, she called for help. Satyavan, the woodcutter, came. He was cutting the wood in deep jungle. His job was to cut woods every day, take it to the city, sell it, and take care of himself and whatever left is given to the parents. She looked at him. She saw in him something which she only knew. He had his own food, he has his own water, he nursed her. She became all right. She didn't say anything, oh, I love you, thank you very much, nothing. She came home, she told father, my father, I have met a man and I have told him in my own mind that he is my man. Father said, you went, you saw a man, you gave your word to him within yourself and he doesn't know about it. She said, no, I want to talk to you first. He said, what is it? He said, well, you know, he's not a prince, but his prince are princes. Where do you find such a prince? He says, he's a woodcutter. And say, hey, crazy girl, what are you doing? Mom, what is it? You fall in love with a woodcutter? She says, well, you know, I'm not fallen on anything. He doesn't know a thing. I know. And I'm telling you as my father that you marry me to this man.
they say, okay, 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 just calm down, have rest, don't worry about it, you're tired, we'll talk about it tomorrow. You know, the fathers do trick number 13, they call it, <laughs> give a slip, call the Grand Vizier, hey, go talk to her. So Grand Vizier was very loving and he raised her and she had a good respect for him. So he came and he said, Savitri, what is the matter, you know, darling, what are you doing? You know, we need somebody with a caliber to run this universe. You know what a big kingdom we've got and you are the one who's going to, and your father wants to retire anyway. And what about this woodcutter business? He said, yeah, he is a woodcutter, that I know, but uh, he should not be a woodcutter, he should be a prince. He said, how you know? She said, I read in his forehead so written that he shall be a prince. It's a crazy girl. If God would have written in his forehead, what the hell is going on? He would have born in a king's house. Divine right of king was the main theory in those days. You know, once you are born in a king's house, you are two years old and you are uh, peeping on everybody, but you are still a king. Yes, true. Once a child was born to a king and what happened was that uh, with the news that after 18 years he's blessed with a son, uh, his heart failed. He died. And this one year old, one day old baby was uh, crowned as a king. And everybody respected that. That's how it used to be. Divine right of king, theory of divine right was very prevalent. So, Grand Vizier talked everything and finally found, aha, uh -huh, it's not going to work out. So, he prayed to Narada, Narayan's best devotee. Well, Narayan pleased, Narada came and he said, My Lord, Savitri wants to marry a woodcutter. Narayan looked, closed his eyes, he said, Daughter, if you choose to marry him, the day you get married, within one year, he shall die by a snake bite, and you shall be a widow. But if you don't marry him, there is another person who you can marry. He can conquer all the kings around and shall be the greatest king by himself too. Make a choice. She said the woodcutter. Okay. And she said to him, she said, Narada, you are the best devotee of Narayan the God, right? But I have one request to make. When a year and a quarter will pass, do come and have food with us. He said, what do you mean with us? He said, with me and my husband. And Nar said, they're not going to be husband. He said, well, there will be. He means, he said, the moment he dies, you are going to marry the other man? He said, no, he'll be my husband and he'll be alive. He said, how? Ah. Savitri said, I am Savitri. And I have read, when a woman is Prati Bharta, she has a devotion with man, that of a god. No god can kill her man. She shall never be widow. I have read the scripture. And I am going to marry this man. And I am going to be real to him, loyal to him. Nath said, you may do anything you want. It is written that it is to be. He said, that's why I said in advance that 
when a quarter year after the year of death passes, we will have food together. It's okay. So you wish. Message was sent to Satyavan to come. He was decorated. Everything was arranged. Marriage took place. They got married. Matter ended. They lived happily. What is the happily? Take horses, go on. A, instead of going cutting woods, they both ran in forest like wild fire. Nobody ever saw them home. That was their first year. Horses used to get tired. They never used to get tired. And their laughs were heard in the skies and the heavens. Anyway, if you ever want to read an English epic written by Rabindranath, uh, sorry, Pondicherry man, what is it? Shri Arvindo. Savitri is available in two volumes. He did a wonderful job on that. Somehow, that day arrived. So they did one thing. They made a tank of water and they put his floating bed in the center of it and made him to be there to lie down. And in that water, they put certain herbs that no snake could enter that water. It doesn't matter what kind of snake is. They sealed it up. And the time was 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. So in the evening when the Aarti happened at the temple of Shiva, the Dasi, the servant, took one lotus and brought where the king was, that prince Satyavan was sleeping and put it in the water. So that lotus became a boat. In the lotus was that little snake cobra. And lotus, before six o'clock, somehow touched the wooden bed. Snake jumped out of it, went, <tick> duck it. One duck, Satyavan was dead. <tick> Savitri was told that it's a pure, simple human error. Mistake happened. There was no God there. Everybody was in the Aarti. And she took the arti flower. Svitri said, I'm not worried. Don't bother. Let him lie down there. There's nothing wrong. He'll get up. Get up with what? He's dead. She said, my prayer is that nobody touch the body of my husband. She sat down in a meditation. Her body became solid like rock. Dharamraj, the god of death who was carrying the soul, she followed him. Came the magnetic light, which is called magnetic line. Dharamraj has to decide. He said, Savitri, I am only allowed to take one soul across. I can't take two. She said, it can be settled. We can compromise. He said, what compromise? He said, I'll let you take the soul of my husband without me. Provided you promise me one blessing. Now, Dharamraj was short of time. And even under great pressure, he said, just one, right? He said, yes. He said, all right, so be it. Speak. So it will be. She said, I should have sons, grandsons, great-grandson, and great-great-great-grandsons, great-sons, great-great-great-sons, something like that. He said, fine, that we. 
And Tarmaraj wanted to go, he couldn't go. He realized, he said, what you have done? It's a simple thing. You have blessed me that I'll have sons, great sons, great grandsons, and all that stuff, right? He said, yes. He said, how can you take away my husband? Now, Tarmaraj understood it was not America. He understood what he's done. And he said, you promised me that I can go with the soul of your I said, She said, yeah, I promise you that you can go. I'm not saying to return him. You want to go, you go. But who's going to fulfill that promise? You gave me the word. He said, you're too clever. Anyway, let us go back. Satyavan got up. Took him out of the bed, brought him to the father, bowed to him. Father was shocked. They again prayed to Narada. Narada came. And uh, king was very astonished. He said, Narada Muni, you see what you see? Narada said, what is there to see? She told me that she will have a feast. So we'll have a feast. No problem. He said, you are Narayan's Bhagata. You told that she's, he's going to live one year and he's still alive. And he said, I said what God has written. But what I am seeing is what she has written. And the king said, my daughter could write? He said, no. There's a quality of a woman called Sohagan. You can read this Shabad by Guru Nanak. Suhagan can rewrite the destiny. Power of love is the prayer of the female in love. And with that prayer, she can rewrite the destiny. 